are the days when camping meant roughing it? Well, me and anyways. I mean, when I was a kid, it seemed like we had very little uh, but an old crappy tent, our sleeping bags, and cans of Vienna sausages for dinner. <laughs> we didn't have things like diesel heaters out for our tents. We didn't have power cooler or portable air conditioner or certainly Starlink, and we certainly didn't have means of power either. Yeah, all these things are part of my current overlanding kit. And I get a lot of questions from you guys on these items and other things that I've mentioned and highlighted in past videos. So, that being the case, I thought I would dip in the old mailbag and see what sort of questions I've gotten lately that would make a, a fun, informative, interesting video. And, well, look what I have here. All right, friends, there you go. That's our topic for the day, and let's dive into what to look for in a overlanding battery. Now, as you may know, I have, over the years, I've tested a number of overlanding batteries. And when I first got my, my Expedition trailer, now this thing had 200 amp hour HM batteries inside of it. And I mean, these were fine, but I wanted to upgrade these lithium batteries or upgrade two lithium batteries to take advantage of the numerous benefits that lithium batteries have over AGMs not of least of which are the excellent depth of discharge and the huge number of uses cycles that you can get out of these. Now, fast forward to where we are right now, I've gone through a number of different lithium batteries for the trailer and currently use 200 amp hour lithium ion batteries from Ultimatron. In fact, I've had these batteries in my trailer for more than a year and a half and they have proven to be the absolute best batteries man, by a long shot. And since these batteries have been so good to me, I'm gonna use them as a point of reference as I'm discussing the, the features that you should prioritize when shopping around for overlanding batteries. Now, though the AGM batteries, they do have their benefits, but I'm gonna stick to the lithium battery features as that's what I've had the best experience with. Now, my Expedition trailer doesn't have a huge amount of electrical components, so I just have a couple hundred amp hour batteries, and that's more than enough juice uh, for what I need, like running the, the trailer's lights. I have a planter diesel heater in the front of this thing, the water pump, charging the various devices and so forth. Now, if you do have a bigger trailer, I mean, you might want to consider getting a larger set of batteries. So for example, Ultimatron, uh, they have 180 amp hour, and then they also have a 280 amp hour options for storing more power. Now, of course, obviously, to keep in mind that as you add more of these batteries, doing so, this is going to add more weight and it's gonna take up more space in your rig as well. So what this means is getting an appropriate amount of power not only requires you to evaluate your power needs, but you also need to factor in the weight and the space that you want these batteries to take up. So in a small setup like mine, the 200 uh, amp hours of batteries, or heck, you could actually get away with one of these things is likely going to be a perfect fit. But if you have a big rig, you will likely need bigger batteries and potentially more of them. Now, a buddy of mine, he has a, what is that thing, a 2021 or 2022 Mercedes Sprinter van. So the, I mentioned a moment ago, these Ultimatron 180s, he has two of those in there. They're over on the driver's side. And the cool thing about these batteries, in case you haven't seen these things, it, battery technology has gotten so amazing here in the, in the recent years. So. These 180 amp hour batteries, it's like this, this, something like this or so. And he has two of them over on the driver's side. Again, 360 amp hours of power. Yeah, he has 200 amp hour uh, solar on the roof. Man, he's living large in there. But anyway, now while traditional AGM batteries are extremely reliable, one of the problems with them is that they, they don't have a great depth of uh, discharge. Now, typically it's recommended that you do not discharge your AGM batteries below 50%. Now, adhering by this rule will help extend the life of the battery, but the cost of doing so is essentially going to cut your battery capacity in half. So for example, my old AGM batteries offered 100 amp hours each. So this was 200 amp hours total. But if I can only discharge them to 50%, that means I really only had 100 amp hour of battery. Now, despite carrying around 200 amp hours of battery, and these things, these batteries were heavy. They're like 63 pounds of pop or something like that. They were not light batteries. Now with the lithium ion batteries though, you can discharge them to about 80% without significantly reducing the lifespan. So not only that, but my batteries have no memory effect. And this is important because there is no need to full charge and discharge cycles, which again, is a pretty nice thing. Now, one of the advantages of using lithium-ion batteries like my Ultratron is that they are capable of far more charge cycles 
than AGMs. For example, my Ultimatron batteries will give me more than 3,000 or more uh, charge and discharge cycles with the depth of discharge of 80% or 2 80%. In contrast, you might get a 500 to 1,000 cycles with AGM batteries at 50% depth of discharge. Now, as you can see here, this is a huge difference. So for someone like me that does camp a lot, the Ultimatron batteries will still last me years. Even in a busy year, I might only have two dozen charge and discharge cycles. At this rate, I could use these batteries in theory 125 years. Uh yeah, sure. Now, if you've been on this channel before, you've likely seen one of my cold weather camping videos. And, you know, look, I know cold weather camping isn't for everyone, but for me, there is nothing better than sitting in my warm tent watching the snow fall outside. Plus, there's far few people camping in winter, so I get a lot more peace and quiet. One of the downsides to overlanding batteries is that they can be, let's be real here, they can be sensitive to extreme temperatures. So it's important considering the operating range of the battery before investing in one of these things. For example, again, referencing the Ultimatron batteries that I am using right now, I, they are rated effective discharge from minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I know damn sure I'm not going to be camping it when it's 140 degrees, but as I said a moment ago, camping in the winter is one of my favorite activities, so I need to prioritize these batteries so they can handle the cold stuff. Now, my batteries do have built-in heaters to protect them from extreme cold, and though I haven't experienced uh, below minus zero temperatures on my trips, I constantly see temperatures that are well below freezing. Thanks to the built-in heaters, my battery's never given me a fit while camping in the winter. Now, it isn't just the discharge temperature rating that is important. You really also need to factor in or consider the temperature range that the batteries will effectively be charged at and also stored at. Now, again, referencing my batteries, they can be charged at temperatures from minus 4 degrees all the way up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. They can also be stored from 23 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, these figures aren't the same for all batteries. So as you're shopping around, you know, be certain to look at these things here. Make sure that your battery, depending upon what your goal is with your camping, is going to accommodate your discharge, charge, and storage need. Now, let's shift gears a little bit, and there's a lot of moving parts that go into an overlanding power setup. Having the ability to monitor your battery's performance is critical so you can ensure it's performing at its very best. Now, my batteries have a built-in uh, battery management system that allows me to control charge the battery safely. In doing so, protects the battery from issues like overheating, charging, over voltages, all of which, when at the end of the day, can really severely mess up your batteries. Now, additionally, I recommend investing in overlanding battery that has Bluetooth connectivity with your phone. This is, again, this is one of, you know, earlier I was talking about the tech and how much it has advanced with batteries over recent years. And as you can see here, this app accompanies my batteries and gives me all sorts of data about the battery's performance. Better still, this data is provided in real time, so I have up-to-the-minute information about the battery's performance. So in my, my Expedition trailer, I do have a Red Arc Manager 30 Red Vision uh, setup, which is my battery management system kind of a from in a whole or kind of a global side of it. But when I want to get more of that nitty gritty information, what's happening with the batteries, again, I can log into this app and I get all sorts of information at my fingertips. Now, batteries like my Ultimatrons, man, these things are not cheap and you want to protect your investment. So buying batteries with a good warranty is one simple way to do that. Now, these bad boys come with a five-year uh, manufacturer warranty. So I have peace of mind that for another three and a half years, that if something does go wrong, Ultimatron has my back. And again, not all batteries are alike. So the warranty that you find will be in different varying lengths. So not only that, they will cover different issues. So make certain that you read the fine print before pressing that... Uh, Good old buy button there. And with that said, you have a few things to look for when shopping for an overlanding battery. Hopefully this quick guide gave you a kind of a compass of what you need to look for for your setup and the best battery for your situation. Now, if you like what you see with my Ultimatron batteries, what I will do is I will put a link in the description below so you can go check them out in more detail. But friends, as always, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions whatsoever on batteries, uh, or anything about this video, leave a comment down below or send me a message. And friends, I would be happy to do what I can to help you out. But that is, hey, that's all I have here for you today. So I'm going to be shutting off the camera so you get out there, stay healthy, and uh, hey, find your best adventure.